means point, so we're on a point here, and Ilnagai means town, so town on the point was the traditional name of this site. The way it got the name Skadans is from the name of the chief of this village, um, and this was actually the house of the chief that we're standing right in front of. Oh. Yeah. So the chief's name here was Skadansta, and Skadansta to the European ear sounded like the word Skadans. Um, so, when people came in, they tried to find out the name of the village, and they ended up finding out the name of the chief. So that's how this became known as Skadan's village. And that happened everywhere up and down the coast. So Skidigit was the name of the chief, Kamshua was the name of the chief, um, even places further south, like Ninstint, which is the World Heritage Site, that was also the name of the chief there. Um, so that's how this became known as Skadan's village. And what happened was the top part just fell down and it's now actually lying along where we walked. And these are another type of pole. These are a memorial pole. So memorial poles were also put up for people who had passed away, but they did not have any remains in them. So you don't actually have any human remains in these poles. Um, and so these people maybe passed away in another village or were lost at sea or drowned. Anyway, they don't have the actual body, so they put up memorial poles. And if you want to look at what this one would have looked like, there's a drawing on page 77. Getting ready to go back. There's Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Wave. Grandma says hi. I know it's big. I loaded down. But I just saw it. I thought, oh, that's very good. <laughs> A whole bunch of seal skin people.
with the curves, you get the contrast. Yeah. Just around the corner, it's a big eagle. So he came across surfing the internet, of course. Came across um, images of basking sharks swimming along the surface in a line. So they're on the surface, their dorsal fin is out of the water. You can imagine being four and five of them lined up in a long train along the surface. It could look like one extremely large single fish or killer whale or whatever. Uh, above that we have the black bear, so the long tongue. The long tongue can mean a lot of different things, much like the faces and the tail, it changes from pole to pole, family to family. Uh, in some cases it's supposed to signify the communication or the transfer of knowledge. Um, it was the supernaturals that already inhabited Haida Gwaii that taught us as a people how to survive here when we first arrived. So it said that when um, the Haida's emerged from the clam shell, which is one of the creation stories, origins, that they were completely naked. And nothing of how to learn or survive on Haida Gwaii, so uh, it would have been the black bear who would have showed them how to eat, what to eat. So there's that transfer of knowledge. Primary in general, the red being the second area, and then the, the third color that would be used is the blue-green. So these were minerals that were found on Haida Gwaii. They were, um, there was hematite for the red, magnetite for the black, and um, vulcanite for the blue-green. And they would be found in raw form. They would uh, dry them or even sometimes bake them or cook them. And then they would um, grind them into a stone bowl and get them into a powder. They would add uh, grind fish eggs in with it. And then they would add um, boiled down fat from the seal or the sea lion and a bit of water to get the consistency right. So this was the old oil-based paint. Uh, the shelf life on this would be no more than two or three years with our uh, frequent storms in the winter and that sort of thing. So things don't last very long on Haida Gwaii like that. These are today's house paints and they're made to last, right? Uh, these bowls are 10 years old now and you can see how much has come off of them already with these today's paints. So. And, 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 and so they will be let disintegrate and return to the earth? Uh, that's the original plan, but today they're kind of debating on whether or not they should repaint them and, and extend the life of the pole, right? It, it protects, it puts an outer coat on, on, on the wood and seals the grain a bit. Otherwise they're completely untreated. The, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the bottom that went in was treated. Yeah. Uh, in the old days they would char it, so they would just lightly burn. Um, the one I prefer to use is currently being used by the, the Canoe Journeys kids. They're um, paddling Luplex, which is a fiberglass, fiberglass copy of Lutas. They're paddling it around down in Guayanas in the park. So, and they're using the one I like to use, which is a bit bigger and uh, has a different design on it. Fairly effective weapon on the water. This one's yellow cedar, so it's a bit uh, heavier and sharper than some of the rest. I don't mind if you handle the paddles. All I ask is that you don't put the tip into the ground. You never hold the paddle like this. When you're not using the paddle, I like to put my hand, I like to put the tip right in the middle of my hand just so I know that I'm not going to jab anyone with it or hit anyone with it. I hold it like this. For eaters, for the food, and for you, I thank you. And Hawas is thank you. Yeah, I'm going to it.